Welcome to our series on Biblical Criticism. In today's episode, we summarize the major historical conclusions of the Wellhausen School of Biblical Criticism and examine the eventual collapse of these old critical theories. First, let's recall the key historical conclusions of Wellhausen's criticism, the Deuteronomic Code, D, and the idea of unified worship emerged during King Josiah's reign. The priestly source, P, developed during the Babylonian exile, introducing concepts like the tent of meeting princes, anointing Levites, and sacrificial laws. However, we've shown that the separation of these sources is based on historical errors and a lack of understanding of language and style. This artificial division doesn't solve any problems and instead relies on deceptive contradictions and weak arguments, leading to absurdities and a disregard for unity in the Torah text. The critic's approach to defining relationships between sources ignores clear evidence that the prophets were familiar with Torah texts long before their supposed composition, according to Wellhausen's timeline. The dating of these sources was also based on unfounded assumptions. The processes described by critics emerge from shallow, sometimes anti-Semitic historical perceptions and a disdain for Judaism and Jews. These processes are based on errors and misinterpretations, reducing much of the Wellhausen biblical criticism to baseless poetic exegesis. By the second half of the 20th century, both Israeli and non-Israeli scholars recognized the collapse of the Wellhausen model, marking the end of its dominance. This doesn't imply a universal academic acceptance of the divine origin of the Torah, but it does indicate new emerging ideas and a changed approach to the entire field. We'll now quote examples from late 20th century research that acknowledge the downfall of theories once considered solid. These examples range from the origins of the tabernacle and its ancient elements, contradicting its supposed creation in the post-exilic period, to the Israeli faith's early formation and the historical nature of Moses and the exodus from Egypt, Jeremiah. Some researchers consider parts of Jeremiah as late compositions from the Deuteronomic school. This view is challenged by the influence of Deuteronomy in Jeremiah's earlier prophecies and his familiarity with Leviticus, evident in his proclamation of the covenant and parallels to Leviticus 26, 12 and other verses. The books of the Torah were well known in Jeremiah's time, indicating their antiquity and Jeremiah's familiarity with them, p. 879. Ezekiel. The diverse opinions about Ezekiel's composition suggest uncertainty. Recent scholarly trends favor the reliability of the dates within the book, attributing it to the period it describes before 570 BCE. The geopolitical context in Ezekiel, including the dominance of Babylon and the decline of Egypt, aligns with this period. The absence of references to events after 570 BCE, like Cyrus and the return to Zion, supports this view, PPR 639-732. Other prophets, Nahum's time in the late 7th century BCE is affirmed by his focus on events of that period. Micah's prophecies are linked to his time, suggesting their authenticity. Zephaniah reflects the international situation relevant to his era. Ezra Nehemiah is acknowledged to have been compiled no later than Nehemiah's days. Interactions among prophets, Ezekiel's historiographic view likely influenced Nehemiah's covenant authors. Jeremiah was well versed in earlier prophecies and drew from them in his own writings. The influence of Deuteronomy can be seen in the writings of other prophets, critique and consequences. Scholars who rejected the Wellhausen theory did not fully appreciate its implications. Kaufman notes that biblical criticism often distorts the history of ancient Israel. He argues for the antiquity and consistency of the Torah and its precedence over literary prophecy. The distinct character of ancient Israelite creation and monotheism is upheld despite criticism. Prophets' writings and additions, key questions in biblical scholarship, such as the boundaries for additions to the Torah and the prophets, remain underexplored. The Torah, given at Moab to the Israelites, did not undergo later changes. There is a consensus that the Torah predates literary prophecy, making major changes in later periods implausible. Amos and Hosea 
Amos speaks of a single Torah transcending the division between the kingdoms of Israel and Judah, indicating its existence before these divisions. Hosea's rebukes to the priests refer to a forgotten Torah, suggesting its established presence in his time. General Implications The historical structure and content of the biblical texts, especially the Torah, align only with the period of the wilderness. The recognition of the Torah's composition around Moses' time and the acceptance of key biblical events and institutions underscore its antiquity and authenticity. In conclusion, the Torah's precedence, prophetic interactions and historical context affirm the traditional understanding of biblical history and composition, challenging late critical theories of biblical authorship. We see that the entire structure of the Wellhausen critique has collapsed. The Torah and the books of the prophets have been reinstated to their natural historical context, beyond the flawed and outdated critical methods of the past. Thank you for joining us in this insightful journey through biblical scholarship. Stay tuned for more episodes where we delve deeper into the fascinating world of biblical studies.